Happy Sabbath, everyone. Well, uh, I would like uh, to say thank you for this opportunity. And um, before we're going to start um, the lesson, I'm going to uh, tell you ahead of time that it will be using lots of Bible verses. Okay, so you, uh, however, I have put all the verses in and there will be more uh, information that you need. Uh, I will, sometimes I will just put the, the preference for you to go in. All the Bible verses that I quoted comes from a New King James Version, except uh, mentioned. And um, uh, before we continue, I would like to invite you once again to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we're going to open your word, we want to invite your Holy Spirit to be with us and helping us to understand and helping us in the study of your word that we will gain insight into the mystery of you. I want to thank you, Lord, that you have given us this opportunity, that you have redeemed us from the sin. Thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, the title, From Eden to Eden. Uh, next. And I would like to start uh, with Genesis chapter 1, from Eden. When God created, when God created uh, the world and of course man. And my focus here will be on the creation of Adam. Let's see from verse 26. Let's see from verse 26. Then God said, Let us make man in our image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And you can see here, when God created Adam and Eve, he had put Adam and Eve in charge of what? In charge of that creation, in charge of the earth. And he says here, if you can see, that God had put them, let them to have dominion, and also to subdue it, and to have dominion over all the created things that God had created in this earth. That means, Adam and Eve has been given a responsibility. Okay? They, had, they are to be what? The king, the ruler of this earth. Another verse from the Bible, Psalms chapter 8, verse 3 to 8. You can see here uh, how David talks about the creation, talks about the creation of man. Okay, let's read from uh, verse 3. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him? And what and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor, and you have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea that pass through the parts of the seas. So you can see here in these uh, verses here, mention about the creation and mention especially the creation of man adam and it says here that god had crowned him adam with glory and honor and made adam him to have dominion over god's creation okay all right and uh, we can see here and i think it is quite clear and i think everyone should uh, agree that adam was created and he was to be the ruler, 
the king of this earth. Alright. Now, let's see another verse, another passage from the Bible that refers back to the creation. In Job chapter 38, verse 4 to 7. Job 38, verse 4 to 7. A question that you know, a God gave to Job. Okay? Uh, because uh, you know, Job had gone through uh, so uh, many sufferings, hardships, persecution from Satan and, and many other things, you see? And then he started to question, why this happened to me? You know, when he gave that question, he bring that question to God. Okay, God gave him an answer, uh, the answers in, in questions. God questions him back. Let's see what God said to Job. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, God said. If you have understanding, who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Yeah, sarcastic, right? Or who stretched, stretched the line upon it? To what were its foundation fastened? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. So these are the series of questions. There are more that are given to uh, Job. Now, I would like to get your attention to what I have underlined there. These verses here referring to the creation. When God created the world, when God put the foundation of this world. And then, during that creation, what happened? In verse 7, when God created the world and all that in it, the morning sun sang together. And the sons of God, they are also shouting for joy. Who, then the question, are the morning stars? Are they really the stars when God created the earth? Who are the sons of God? Who were the sons of God? So these are the questions uh, when uh, I see uh, this uh, passage here. Seems like there are other creatures that have been created before the creation, right? Before the creation of our earth, of this world. The morning stars, the stars are singing, and also the sons of God. We're going to see uh, later on, we try to find out who, who, who are the morning stars? Well, you can see it is not morning star, it is plural, morning stars. We know that morning star uh, referred to Jesus, but also referred to Satan in uh, the prophecy. Okay, now, who are the morning stars? The stars in the Bible okay, is a symbol for, as we read, Revelation chapter 12, verse 4 and verse 9. Okay, let's see. His tail, referring to Satan, drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman uh, who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. And in verse 9, so the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of all called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. You can see that this stars of heaven are referring to the angels, his angels, the Satan's angels that cast out from heaven to earth. So here, the stars are referring to the angels, the angels. Okay, now I think it is quite clear, uh, Lucifer known as morning stars, morning star, and the stars are referring to the angels. Now let's see uh, another question. Okay, who are the sons of God? There are several mentions of this uh, phrase, the sons of God. And it mentioned in the book of Job, the first and the second chapter of Job. And let's see, uh, Job chapter, chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to pre present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? So Satan answered to the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking back and forth on it. 
So, we can see uh, uh, an event here described by a Job in the book of Job. Okay? There's, there was a day, one day, the sons of God get together, present themselves uh, in front, you know, uh, in, with God, okay, before the Lord. And then Satan also there. Satan came. The question where this meeting happened? Where this meeting happened? When the sons of God came before the Lord and Satan also there, where was this meeting held? Where was this meeting held? And it's not one time, because in chapter 2, verse 1, the word again. Now, the word again means after they have presented themselves in front of God, before God, they went back, and then again they come again. You know, they come. Okay. So it's not that they always be there in the, you know, before God. They went somewhere else and then come back again. So as Satan in chapter 2, right? The same thing happened, it's actually similar. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present them himself before the Lord. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? The answer was said, from the earth. Now, what we can get from these uh, two chapters of Job, Job 1 and Job 2, as, as I uh, said just now, the, the question, where this meeting happened? It seems like God is having a council, a council, a council meeting, a cabinet meeting. And he wanted to get the reports from the sons of God. And also Satan was there giving reports. Right? So it happens in actually in heaven where God is, where God resides. The sons of God came. And also Satan came. Satan seems to be here, had the opportunity to go to heaven. And what he did in heaven, in this council, he, Satan, is representing what? According to him, oh, I'm from the earth. He is representing, he was rep representing the earth. He was representing the earth. Now, of course, when God had this so-called council meeting, and I, okay, in uh, Second Chronicles chapter 18, okay, there are some of um, information about the council that God had in heaven. Okay, the council. God is not God. You know, it's not a detect detector. You know. Even though he knows everything, he is omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. But he wants to involve everyone in his kingdom. He wants to involve, you know, uh, everyone. Well, maybe not everyone, but at least representatives from all quarters of his uh, creation to be in the, in the council. He wanted them to have responsibility. That's what our God is. He is not a detector. He wants to give us responsibility. If he is a detector, he can do it straight away. You know, okay, earth, go out. But he wants everyone to have a responsibility. Okay, so we can see that there's a meeting in heaven. There was a meeting in heaven. Happened, described in Job, and Satan was there. Okay. Now, it mentioned about the sons of God and also Satan. What conclusion that we can keep, uh, you can make from these passage, passages here? The sons of God and Satan came to this meeting before God. Could it be that these sons of men, also just like Satan, when Satan representing the earth, the sons of men that mentioned here representing another world? another realm in the council of heaven right now when we look into this 
the sons of God in the council in heaven, representing another world. Then, before the creation of our earth, there are already sons of God singing while looking into the creation of our earth. And of course, angels are already there, together, right? Singing, looking into the creation of our earth. And they know they are looking when God created Adam and Eve and put Adam in charge of this earth. Alright, and we know also that Adam, okay, uh, I will go into that later. Now, the question, who are the sons of God? And the question also, why Satan among the sons of God? Now, let's read in the Bible. Luke chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. <coughs> this is what the claim that uh, Satan made. Luke chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. It says, Then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, all this authority I will give to you and their glory for this, referring to the authority, has been delivered to me and I give it to whomever I wish. What is the claim that Satan made here? That he is the what? The ruler of this earth. And he tried to you know, uh, give Jesus, okay, if you bow down to me, I will give you all this kingdom. This mine. Okay, so he claimed rulership of this earth. In John chapter 12, verse 31, Jesus said, Now the just judgment of this world. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. Jesus is referring to the ruler of this world. That phrase referring to Satan. Jesus said, Now Satan will be cast out. We will go back to this verse later on. Okay, what happened? Because in uh, Genesis chapter 3, what happened to Adam and Eve? They put themselves what? In uh, uh, they put themselves into the charge of Satan. They have been given the dominion of, of, over this earth. But then they surrender their rights to Satan when they fall into sin. And that is why Satan claimed, now the world is mine. Now the world is mine. Adam has been overthrown. In uh, Romans 6 verse 16, Paul said, and I to use uh, NLT here. Don't you realize that you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. Now, when Adam fell into sin, he gave himself a slave to Satan. And so do we, if we, uh, you know, uh, follow the will of Satan. We are giving ourselves as slaves to Satan. Uh, next. Okay. So, in Luke chapter 3, verse 38, the question again, who are the sons of God? Now, it mentioned the genealogies of Jesus. Okay. Uh, here, the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. Who's the son of God? Adam referred here as the son of God. Right? Adam referred here as the son of God. And in Patriarch and Prophets, page 45, mentioned here, it says like this, uh, referring to the genealogies of Christ. The genealogy of our race as given by inspiration, traces back its origin not to a line of developing germs, mollusks, and quadrupeds, but of the great creator. Though formed from the dust, Adam was the son of God. He was placed as God's representative over the lower orders of being. So, Adam has been put in charge of the earth, and he was this title given to him, the son of God. He 
was the son of God. He is the son of God. Not by, okay, uh, not by uh, procreation, but by creation. All right. Adam, here again, uh, from Review and Herald, Adam was crowned as king in Eden. To him was given dominion to uh, the dominion over every living thing that God had created. The Lord blessed Adam and Eve with intelligence such as he had not given to the animal creation. He made Adam the rightful sovereign over all the works of his hands. So again, mention about Adam as the ruler of this earth. And he is the son of God. Just as what mentioned in the book of Job, the sons of God, Adam should be in that council. Right? Because he is the son of God. Just like the other sons of God. But then what happened? As he fell into sin, he gave his throne to Satan. And now Satan, instead of Adam, representing the earth in the council of heaven. Okay. Next. And also, uh, in Patriarch and Prophets, page 48, in Eden, God set up the, mem uh, the memorial of his work of creation in placing his blessing upon the seventh day, the Sabbath was committed to Adam, the father and representative of the whole human family. So Adam is the representative of the whole human family. Okay, so we have from the Bible and also from uh, the uh, spirit of prophecy, okay, the evidence that Adam is the rightful owner, ruler of this earth, but was been taken over by Satan. Next a slide. Now, another question comes up that has something to do with the sons of God. They are the 24 elders of Revelation. In Revelation chapter 4, verse 1 to 4, after these things I look, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and one set on the throne. So you can see here, one throne, and the one sitting on the throne. And he who sat there was like a jasper and sardius stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. In verse 4, which I have underlined. Around the throne, around the one throne, there were, what? 20, around, the, uh, around the throne were 24 thrones. And on the thrones, I saw 24 elders sitting, clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. There are questions that are given to many uh, Bible students, especially the, you know, when you are uh, learning on prophecy. Who are the 24 elders? This question has not been answered adequately. And for me, as I have been, uh, you know, um, learning this in a seminary in college there's no clear answer actually given i asked our professor and they said we are not really sure who are the 24 elders and some said that the 24 elders are those that are representing the old testament and the new testament but some said that the 24 elders are those that have been resurrected together with christ when christ in during christ's resurrection but it is not supported and when i see uh, the, all the verses in the Bible referring to the 24 elders, they are not human. They, are, they don't come from this earth. Okay, but uh, because of time, we cannot go through all the verses uh, concerning the 24 elders. But let's see here, let's imagine that this happened in the throne room of heaven. The throne where the one that is God the Father. So you can see in Revelation 4 and Revelation 5, okay, God the Father sitting on one throne. And then there are 24 thrones around the one throne, okay, where 
the 24 elders are sitting. And of course, it's also mentioned the four, uh, the four beasts, the cherubs, cherubs, and the uh, seraphs. Okay, so those present in the throne room of heaven in Revelation chapter four. Okay, in Revelation chapter five, the same thing mentioned. And the setting was in uh, in in front room of heaven, in before God the Father. So we have in Revelation chapter five, God the Father, and then the four cherubs and seraphs, and the twenty-four elders, and in chapter five, the Lamb, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, came in to the throne room, the throne room of heaven, and together with him. Together with Jesus came the angels. Came the angels. All right. So this happened in the throne room of heaven. Now let's go back to Job chapter one and chapter two. What's happened in the throne room of heaven? The the sons of God coming there, and also the angels in there, in the councils of heaven. Okay. So we can see here in Revelation chapter five, God there, God was there. The cherubs and seraphs was there. The twenty-four elders was there. Jesus came in in chapter five, and the angels also came in. Now who's missing? Satan was missing. Satan was missing. He was not there. He should be there. He should represent the earth, but what happened? What happened? Now, in John 12 verse 31 and 33, we have read one of these verses, uh, uh, you know, previously. Okay, let's read again. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of the, this world will be cast out. Cast out from where? Okay, the ruler of this earth, this world will be cast out. And I, say Jesus, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. This he said, signifying by what death he will die. So this is what Jesus said. When he will be lifted up, he will bring all men, all people to him. Okay? But he said here, now okay, the ruler of this world will be cast out. He is about to be crucified. He is about to be crucified. And let's read Revelation chapter 12, verse 10 to 11. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren, it is Satan, who accused them before our God day and night has been cast out. Cast out from where? And they overcame him by the blood of where? Yeah. Okay, cast out from where? If you read uh, the other verses after this, cast out from heaven. What happened when God, when Jesus crucified? When Jesus was crucified, that is the time that he won the battle. He won the battle. He cast out Satan from his position as representative of this world in the council of heaven. Now, Satan has been cast out. Okay. And uh, it says that uh, in Revelation chapter 12, woe, woe to this earth because Satan has been cast out to this world. And you read the other verses from Revelation chapter 12. So, you can see here uh, the history of time. When, when Jesus crucified, that was the time Satan has no place in heaven anymore as a representative of this world who was cast out. And who took over? Jesus took over. Okay. As Satan has been cast out from heaven, now the question comes, who represents the earth? In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22 and 20 and 45, it talks about Adam again and the second Adam. Okay, the first Adam and the last Adam. Uh, verse 22, for as in Adam all die, 
Even so in Christ all shall be made alive And in verse 45 And so it is written The first man, Adam, became a living being The last Adam became a life-giving spirit Jesus is the life-giving spirit Adam has fallen into sin And he has given his throne to Satan But Jesus, the last Adam Was able to take the throne back yeah, Romans 5 verse 18 Therefore as through one man's offense Judgment came to all men Resulting in condemnation Even so through one man's righteous That's Jesus The free gift came to all men Resulting in justification of life So this is what happened the, the, the throne of this world Has been taken over by Jesus Because he is now the last Adam the first Adam failed the last Adam won Hebrews chapter 2 verse 5 to 9 if you, as you read these verses here you will be recalled back to the verses that we have read earlier in Psalms chapter 8 right Chap uh, verse 5 for he has put he, for he has not put the world to come of which we speak in subjection to angels but one testified in a certain place saying he is referring to the Psalms chapter 8 verse 3 to 8 what is man that you are mindful of him or the son of man that you take care of him you have made him a little lower than the angels you have crowned him with glory and honor and set him over the works of your hands you have put all things in subjection under his feet Referring to the creation of Adam But then Look into verse 8 Okay, For in that he put all in subjection under him He left nothing that is not put under him But now What happened? Okay, These are referring to Adam But now We do not yet see all things put under him But we see Jesus Who was made a little lower than the angels For the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor that he, by the grace of God, might pass death for everyone. What happened here? What happened when Jesus died? The suffering of death. He was crowned with glory and honor. By his death, Jesus has been crowned with glory and honor. Just like Adam had been crowned with glory and honor at his creation. When God created Adam, he was crowned with glory and honor. But then, that same verse applied to Jesus. When he, when he died for our sins, he resurrected with crown of glory and honor. Okay, so we can see here that now, Jesus represents the earth. There are many uh, quotations from the spirit of prophecies referring to this okay i will read several of them from signs of the times june 11 uh, 1894 the human race does not stand in the righteousness of character which adam possessed at his creation although neglect to keep the requirements of god is sin and the wages of sin is death yet there is no claim made that man may have eternal life except through the obedience and righteousness of jesus christ who is the representative and head of all humanity there is the com comments referring to uh, Hebrews chapter 2 another one Jesus humbled himself clothing his divinity with humanity in order that he might stand as the head and representative of the human family and by what precept and example condemn sin in the flesh and give the lie to Satan's charges another one Manuscript uh, 126, page 126, 1906, As representative of the fallen race, Christ passed over the same ground on which Adam stumbled and fell. So, with, uh, his, uh, with his victory on the cross, Jesus, the last Adam, took over the throne from Satan. The throne which Adam, the first Adam, lost. Now, Jesus, right now, representing us 
in the council of heaven. He is our mediator. He is our high priest. He is mediating you and me in the courtroom of heaven. That is his responsibility now. Another one, Gospel Herald. Christ was to suffer in our behalf, standing at the head of humanity as representative of the race. There are so many other uh, quotations, but I just give this several quotations. Now, you can see from the creation of Adam, right? And he lost the throne to Satan. And now, Jesus was able to take over the throne. And now, Jesus is the head of humanity. When we read the, the parables of the lost sheep that mentioned in Luke chapter 15, verse 4 to 7. Okay. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness, go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he found it, he lays it on his shoulder, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine just persons who need no repentance. Well, we are referring these uh, parables to the sinners that repented. And we said, if even one repent, the whole heaven will rejoice. But actually, it is not just you know, referring to each individual, individual that, will, that are repenting, that will repent. But it is actually referring to our one earth, one world that has strayed away. Because when we read now John 3 verse 16, which all of us here can memorize, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What happened to the other worlds? They have not fallen into sin. Just one world, our earth, had fallen into sin. And with this one world that had fallen into sin, God sent Jesus to save our world. And this celebration mentioned here, the joy in heaven over one sinner, mentioned in Revelation chapter 5 when you know the the seraphs the all angels uh, the 24 elders they were singing celebrating the victory of Jesus was able to take back the throne the earth they were joys in heaven joys in heaven because Jesus had won the victory Jesus had won the victory in uh, the in Christ's object lesson, you know, it is uh, really mentioned here that this parable is actually referring to our earth that has been strayed, stray, that strayed away, that fall. God, look, our earth, precious, so precious. Look into a bigger picture, our world, our earth is precious to him than all the other worlds that has not fallen that he sent Jesus to our earth here and so as individual God look into each one of us as precious as you know as precious as as, as he look into our world he the whole angel the whole heaven will shout, will sing with joy when one, when one of us repented. When one of us repented. Now, of course, you can you start to think, well, if Jesus now had taken over the throne of for this earth, he is the king of kings, he is the ruler of this earth. Well, what happened in this, uh, after the second coming of Christ? Those who are faithful to God, 
will be resurrected according to uh, Thessalonians, right? Uh, chapter 4. They will hear the trumpet and the dead in Christ will rise again. Will Adam be one of them? Will Adam be one of them? Of course. I'm sure Adam will be one of them that will be resurrected when Jesus comes the second time. The question is, will Adam ever be placed on the throne again? Will Jesus, who is now having the throne of this earth, will give this throne back to Adam? Look what has been uh, written in uh, the book, uh, Great Controversy, page 647. I would like to read, and it's so beautiful. As the ransomed ones are welcomed to the city of God, there rings out upon the air an exultant cry of adoration. The two Adams are about to meet. The Son of God is standing with outstretched arms to receive the Father of our race, the being whom He created, who sinned against His Maker, and for whose sin the marks of the crucifixion are borne up upon the Saviour's form. As Adam descends, the prince of the cruel nails, he does not fall upon the bosom of his Lord, but in humiliation, cast himself at his feet, crying, Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Tenderly the Saviour lifts him up and bids him look once more upon the hidden home from which he has so long been exiled. Can you imagine? Can you imagine these things? When Adam and all the saints being brought to heaven, can you imagine that? Let's read again. After his expulsion from Eden, Adam's life on earth was filled with sorrow. Every dying leaf, every victim of sacrifice, every blight upon the fair face of nature, every stain upon man's purity was a fresh reminder of his sin. Terrible was the agony of remorse as he beheld iniquity abounding. And in answer to his warnings, met with reproaches cast upon himself as the cause of sin. With passion, humility he bore for nearly a thousand years the pen penalty of transgression. Faithfully he did repent of his sin and trust in the merits of the promised Savior and he died in the hope of a resurrection. The Son of God redeemed man's failure and fall and now through the work of uh, the atonement, Adam is reinstated in his first dominion can see Jesus when he welcomed Adam into heaven and he said see this the Eden this is yours I will give back the throne to you you will be you will have dominion again over the earth so you can see Adam from the Eden he lost his Eden and in the end God, Jesus, gave him back the new Eden. Of course, we know that after that, God will recreate new. There will be a new heaven and new earth. And Adam will be the ruler of the new heaven and new earth. You can see that's a, it's a beautiful story and how Adam will be reinstated again to his throne that he has lost. That he has lost to Satan. So, the conclusion, God has a counsel, he's not a detector, he, to govern the universe. Uh, we have somehow identified the identity of the 24 elders. There will be more lessons on this if you need more clarification on the 24 elders. 
But the most important thing is that Jesus took over the rulership of this earth from Satan. He had died on the cross for you and me to redeem us from Satan. He had won on behalf of the first Adam. And the good news that we are looking forward to. Adam will be reinstated back to his original throne. And if we will be there, and I hope every one of us will be there, we will be able to see, to observe the re-coronation of Adam. We can see Jesus take the crown and put that crown on Adam's hand. As we can see from this story of redemption of our earth, Jesus, God, has given us this plan of redemption, of salvation, and He gave it freely to you and me. He had won the victory on behalf of you and me. What we can do, what we have to do, is just to put our faith on Jesus. Because our own faith is not good enough. Our own faith not good enough. We are to have faith in the faith of Jesus. We have to have the faith of Jesus, not our own faith. Because He had won. We just need to claim that victory from Jesus. On our own strength, we will not have that victory. It's only through the strength from Jesus, from the blood, by the blood of the Lamb we will get victory. So I hope that from this lesson, Bible studies, you know, we will gain a form insight into the history of redemption and how God has to want us back into this form. We are the lost one sheep. But we will be going back home. Next right. We are so grateful because you have given us the chance to try again. We hope to be able to be able to overcome Satan and sin. But thank you that Jesus said come down to this earth and die for us and to save us from sin to save us from Satan and to take back the this the dominion of this earth and Satan. I want to thank you that in the future you will raise the us again into the original image that you have given us when you created Adam and Eve we will be returning back to that original image. And thank you for the hope that you have given. Thank you, Lord, that you will continue to be with us as it is And thank you once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.